couple of weeks ago, the lottery uh, made its way up to $70 million. $70 million is a lot. That kind of caught my eye. I went home thinking about it, thinking, what would I do with $70 million? And this is not the first time I've had this conversation with myself. It isn't always 70, but, but from the time I was little, this was always part of the, the dinner table. My dad loved talking about the lottery. He, to the very end, he would buy lottery tickets and he would always say, you know, when we win and the jackpots were even crazier, 300 million or whatever, you know, he would, he would talk about how he was gonna share it with me and my brother. And it was, gonna, it was just gonna be fun. It was gonna be fun to win all this money. There's always been this question, what would you do, right? If that money fell from the sky? So a couple of weeks ago, that was, I thought, well, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty decent amount. What would I do with that? And for the first time in my life, I didn't really know. I can track my whole life as these stages of, well, this is the thing I would build, or this is the thing I would want to accomplish, or, you know, some clarity of where I would want to be investing the big win. And, and I got home and I, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see what that thing was. And that felt wrong. It felt wrong not to know. Like something was missing. Last week we talked, we started talking about the eight awakenings of great beings. The first one was few desires. And the second one, Dogen says, is to know how much is enough. Even if you already have something, you should set a limit for yourself for using it. Knowing how much is enough. Now, I would love to spin this story to say that I've, I've just reached a kind of maturity where I realize that I have enough. And so I'm no longer stuck in that place of wanting and wanting and imagining all the things that I don't have. You know, I'm a little, maybe not quite post dukkha, but you know, moving there. That would be great to say. That isn't this. Maybe it's part of it, I'm older. My dreams are probably less extravagant than they used to be. But it isn't as simple as that. It isn't as simple as the freedom that should come from not wanting. Because when I noticed that I didn't know what I wanted to do, I didn't know what dream I wanted to create, I wanted to find it again. I wanted the feeling of that. The absence of that feeling felt a little bit numb. I thought, am I okay? So I walked around with this for a while thinking, well, what's, what stage am I at in my life? And that's hard to say, and maybe that's part of it. I feel like I'm kind of in a transition. Maybe I'm not going to do the things that I thought I was going to do. Maybe it's something else. And after I sat with that for a while, then I asked myself, well, having taken that in, having processed that, do you want the $70 million? Yes. Sure. I don't know what to do with it. So that part of the wanting is, is elusive, but I can still access the most basic want. 
I can still see something over there and want it for myself. Of course, I'll solve the problem later of how to spend it. Is $70 million enough? Yes. But there's a lot of enough before we get to $70 million. Dogen writes, because he's always talking, he's quoting the Buddha, right? This is his commentary on the, on the Buddha's teaching. He says, the Buddha said, if you want to be free from suffering, this is the same as the first one. It's about freedom. If you want to be free from suffering, you should contemplate knowing how much is enough. And note, it isn't as simple as don't want stuff. It isn't even as simple as be satisfied. Not exactly. He's offering a practice. He's saying, look at this directly. Ask yourself this question. How much is enough? You can ask yourself this question all the time. From the time you wake up in the morning until the time you go to bed. You can ask it about what you're eating, about what you're doing, about the person you're with. How much is enough? By knowing it, he writes, you are in the place of enjoyment and peacefulness, which is really not so deep. Right? This comes out of a philosophy that is based entirely, almost, on the idea that, that our core problem, our core source of suffering is that we want. He's saying if you don't if you don't want, you're gonna feel better. That by the way is what I love about this particular teaching. There's so many teachings in the Buddhist world, so many teachings in the Zen world that are so they're so rich and I love them, but they they they're layered. If you want to read the Lotus Sutra, you can read the Lotus Sutra, but you should probably read multiple translations of the Lotus Sutra. And as you do, you should read commentaries on the Lotus Sutra. And then you should read the modern guides to the Lotus Sutra so that you can understand all the facets of it, all the imagery, all the history, all the things that are happening simultaneously within that Sutra. That's one kind of teaching. And then we have this kind of teaching, which is exactly what it says. It's so straightforward. These are the markers of spiritual maturity. They're not hard to understand. They're not out of reach. And there's no secret teaching behind them. He continues, if you know how much is enough, you are contented even when you sleep on the ground. If you don't know it, you are discontented even when you are in heaven. You can feel poor even if you have much wealth. You may be constantly pulled by the five sense desires and pitied by those who know how much is enough. This is called to know how much is enough. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you will be pitied, he says, by those who do know as they watch you being dragged around by wanting. As I said, we can ask this about any specific thing. And then there's this other question, this question that we, we maybe ask differently as we age. It's kind of the midlife crisis question, where we don't just ask how much cake is enough. We say, how much is enough? Period.
we may conclude that we're not there. That may be exciting. It may drive us towards something. But within the context of this tradition, this practice, that would be a kind of fun delusion. Because it's not that complicated. There's an answer. How much is enough? is how much there is. My dad, who loved the lottery so much, he died last summer, as many of you know. And I can ask myself, did I spend enough time with him? And that can feel like a hard question. It's an opportunity to, to either feel some contentment or to kind of pick a wound. But the fact is there wasn't more, there wasn't more time. Enough is a problem in itself. The problem of enough isn't about whether we have it or not. It's that we imagine it's real. We imagine that this measurement of our life is real. Enough compared to what? Enough for what? If you only live a relatively short time, did you live enough? I understand the intent behind the question, but the more I think about the question like that, the less I get it. Because the only way that there can be an answer is if we have another, another measurement. Something to stack up next to enough. And that too is just something we're making. So that we can compartmentalize our life. So that we can put numbers on our life. So that we can see it in terms of fewer or less. Dogen says something so interesting at the beginning, before he starts quoting the Buddha, after he says that the second awakening is to know how much is enough, he says, even if you already have something, you set a limit for yourself for using it. And so he's dropping a hint. He's saying, do you want to take this up as a practice? Do you want to understand what this is? Take something where you think you have enough. Now have less of it. This is the practice of renunciation. Not a rejection of the world, which I think is how the word so often sounds. It's a letting go of this idea of enough. Monks and nuns are historically depicted 
as, as models of freedom. Why? It's mostly because they don't own anything. And so they're free from that problem. And they can't have power. And so they're free from that problem. And until this tradition changed a couple hundred years ago, they also couldn't have intimate relationships. They couldn't marry well. They couldn't have children. They couldn't accumulate wealth. They couldn't inherit. We're free. Free from the possibility of ever getting more than what they had. Which, according to Dogen and 2,500 years of teachers, is a really great way to find out how much is enough. I love this one. I love this statement that you find something that you already have. And you kind of put a box around it to find out what you really have. That's part of what this practice looks like. Not just sitting on a cushion, not just breathing, not just reading or thinking or listening to things that feel profound. checking those edges, noticing the things you take for granted, the things that you assume should be there. Recognizing that whether you have what feels like enough or not, it's all changing and it's all slipping away, even as you are changing and you are slipping away. At the very end, whether it comes this week or 50 years from now, you will breathe out one more time. And you will have breathed just enough. I'll stop there.